Welcome to The Growth Desk, where we talk to the innovators using AI to reshape how advisors work, grow, and serve their clients. Today's guest is Liam Hanlon, Head of Insights at Jump, an advisor-focused AI company on a mission to make every conversation smarter and every decision more data-driven. So we'll unpack how Jump's approach to insights goes far beyond dashboards and how they're turning thousands of advisor client conversations into actionable intelligence that drives real outcomes across entire firms. So let's jump in. Yes, we went there. <laughs> Liam, thanks so much for joining me. Thanks, Shannon. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. So I want to start at the beginning. What was Jump's original mission statement and how has that changed as you've grown and matured as a company? Yeah, we're we're fairly new uh, as a com as a company. Um, we started in 2022, but really launched in January of 2024. The original mission statement aligned with something that the wealth management industry had been dealing with for a long time, which I call the financial advisor time crisis. Our mission statement was: Can we cut meeting admin time by 90 percent while still elevating the client and advisor experience? So that means taking time away from pre-meeting prep, post-meeting notes, uh, automating tasks, so on and so forth. And to a large degree, we've succeeded. About 60% of our users save over an hour per day or 250 hours per year, which is a little hard to imagine or unfathomable. But we're seeing that they're spending that time not on the golf course or in the country club, but delivering more client service, trying to deepen relationships with clients, doing more marketing promotion, having more prospecting calls. So you see this trend emerge. We're taking time away from admin and now we're spending it, these advisors are spending it on growth oriented activities. So our question originally and our mission was, how can we save or help reclaim time for financial advisors, it's become how can we optimize the time that we've given back? We've given back 250 hours to your year. That's meaningful. Can we actually help you in those conversations, get deeper with your client, have more meaningful conversations, capture more of a wallet share or identify opportunities? So excited to talk a little bit more about that today. I was going to say, maybe the best ones can do it while at the golf course, too. <laughs> sure. uh, but I do want to ask, because your title is actually Head of Insights, what exactly does Insights mean at Jump? Yeah, it's a fancy way of saying Head of Data Science or Data Analytics. But we have this robust and valuable inventory of data, which is client and advisor conversations. Forever, we've been without this data set. But Kitsis and others say that 70% of new assets and new referrals are traced back to meeting touch points. So when we make decisions as advisors or firms about how we want clients to behave, how are we going to go after prospects? How can we succeed more in the conversations we're having? When we are making those decisions without the data of the conversation itself, we are flying blind a little bit. So we've now, we, now that we have access to this data, we've opened up a whole new world of opportunity. Insights is how can we employ this data that we're capturing, give it back to the advisors and the accounts in the most meaningful way to help them make smarter decisions in their meetings and in their day-to-day -day lives with their clients. And you're actually listening, well, I use listening lightly, <laughs> but you're capturing and, and, and listening to thousands of advisor client conversations. What are some of the most surprising or mind-blowing insights your team has uncovered from all these conversations? Yeah, it's a great question. Yeah, so on our platform last month, we actually logged about 100,000 advisor and client conversations. That brings us to over a million conversations that have happened on the Jump platform in the last year. The most interesting insights are ones that you could never predict. It's the things that you wouldn't expect. For instance, our data is ground truth. It tells us the truth about the behavior of advisors and clients in ways that we could have never expected before. We've relied so long on survey data or on third-party research or anecdotal responses from experts or subject matter experts within the industry. For instance, one of the examples I love to give is um, when you ask advisors, and we did, about 400 of them, who talks more on your meetings, you or your client? 
about 87% of advisors think that their clients talk more than they do. When you look at our data, you can see it's a almost the exact opposite. About 84% of advisors are talking more than their clients on calls. So this is really revealing. It's not just fun and advisors get a good laugh when I share this, but it's also uh, important because if you're making decisions on the survey responses, which is what most people are doing, you could be making a decision that's counterproductive to what you want to achieve because you're making it based on false information. Another really interesting insight is that our data can be predictive. If you look at something like Google Trends and you search a topic like Roth conversions, you can see when people are searching Roth conversions throughout the year. You see it spikes around mid-December. And so advisors who are following these trends might think, OK, I should be ready to have the conversation about a Roth conversion in mid-December, which makes sense because there's a deadline associated with a Roth conversion at the end of the year. However, if you look at our data between advisors and clients, clients actually spike in the question they're asking about Roth conversions six weeks before mid-December. So it can be predictive in a way that if an advisor has that knowledge that Roth conversions are coming up in client questions across their firm, across the industry, they'll be ready in advance of when their client's going to bring it up, which is really the problem that we're trying to solve. Give the information back to the advisors before they're jumping into a meeting with a client to be more prepared for the conversation they're going to have. Well, then this might be the million dollar question, but how do insights from your team actually come to life inside the jump product? And and I guess most importantly, how do you ensure that those insights don't just sit in a dashboard, collect dust, but actually, you know, drive advisor behavior and firm decisions? Yeah, it's a great question and, and one that I think has been uh, debated over, right? There's a few different forms and fashions where insights can come to fruition within the product. Number one is a dashboard. You want to play back some of this conversational intelligence to the user so that they can see on a day-to-day -day basis, hey, what's trending throughout the industry? Something they can log in and check before any call or what products are clients bullish on today? But there is an aspect of bringing the insight to the advisor in the most salient location that means two places for us um, where we see it making the most impact. First is the pre-meeting prep. Our pre-meeting prep saves 22% of our advisors a meaningful amount of time. It saves all of our advisors some time, but 22% of them are power users when it comes to pre-meeting prep. In that pre-meeting prep, you'll have the insight related to the call ahead. So if I'm meeting with you, Shannon, um, you're from, let's say, the Midwest, you're of a certain age, you told me that you want to make a decision about your estate next time we chat, and that was, let's say, a year ago, I could get an insight related to that conversation off the top of my pre-meeting prep. It would say, you're meeting with Shannon, this is her profile and demographic characteristics, she wants to make a decision about an estate plan. If you want her to take this action, here's what you should do, X, Y, and Z. And we know what you should do because we know the conversational variables that lead to success. And then the second place this will come to fruition is in a scorecard. So after the call that I have with you, it will spit back, here's what you did well, here's what you didn't do well. And these insights that we gleaned before the call happened, this is why you want to do well in this portion of the call, because it leads to a client behavior that you desire. So those are the two forms that we see really coming into the product in the next couple of weeks. Oh, well, very exciting. And it's interesting because it's almost a little bit of self-coaching. Like you said, it kind of gives you that proactive action items to ensure that every time you're having those conversations, you can hopefully extract more and more out of that client to ultimately do what advisors do best, which is serve their clients. So let's zoom out then a little bit. How do insights influence not just individual advisor performance, but mm. firm-wide strategy? Yeah, that's a great question. So at the advisor level, this is exactly what you just said, an AI coach, right? It's telling you how to perform better in the ways that you want to perform better. At the firm level, it's really a complementary piece to practice management. What are the strategic initiatives that you want to drive throughout your advisors? For instance, it could be something as specific as we talk to a firm 
that changed their name recently. And they wanted to see how many advisors are actually using our new name? How many are using the legacy branded name? Can we track that? Yes. So right away, we can tell you maybe it's 50-50. And then those that aren't using it, can we pinpoint who they are? That depends on your account configurability, but the answer is yes. And how can we coach them to actually use the name that we want? Well, we can put it in the scorecard. We can put it in the pre-meeting prep. We can meet the advisor where they are in those salient locations to make sure that we're nudging them in a way that we want to. So that's the first thing that a firm will look for. Um, the second is what we call a formula of success. So firms oftentimes have KPIs, right, that they would like their advisors to meet. And uh, they are oftentimes related to growth and revenue. For instance, one of the things that you always want to do as an RIA or an independent broker dealer is have more successful prospecting calls. You have about 30 a year, I would say, as the average advisor. And the average advisor is converting about 10 of those 30 prospects to become clients. So about a 33% success rate. We analyzed tens of thousands of prospecting calls. We know which conversational variables in a prospecting call leads to success. So if an advisor says X, Y, and Z, it will increase their likelihood of a prospect becoming a client. So the firm would employ that formula of success. And basically what it would do is give every one of their advisors some sort of soft training material on how to have that conversation before they're going to. So if a prospecting call is coming up, they'll be hit with an email of that formula of success reminding them, hey, if you want to increase your likelihood of converting this prospect to a client, remember to do X, Y, and Z. The advisor wants to perform better, so it's mutually beneficial, and the firm grows faster because of it. Well, I'm certainly sold. Liam, appreciate you giving us a look under the hood a little bit more and all the great stats that you gave us in this conversation. Much appreciated. Thanks, Shannon. That's a wrap on this episode of The Growth Desk. Huge thanks to Liam Hanlon and the Jump Team for showing us how real insights, not just data, can shape the future of advice. And if your firm is ready to move from that gut feel to data-backed decisions, check out Jump and see what your advisor conversations are really saying. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time at The Growth Desk, where innovation meets impact.